Hi, everyone. My name is Rick Tudor, and I'm with the uh, Kino Bay Mexico mission team. And uh, at this time, I would like to invite our team up, please. Just briefly, I promise. I think it's uh, our smallest team ever, but uh, they worked really hard. They made up for it. Thank you, guys. <laughs> pastor uh, Francisco, he's the assistant pastor at the church in Kino Bay, uh, couldn't, couldn't make it this time. Uh, in person, however, I think we have a video uh, that we're going to share. Good evening, with you. Church of Sierra Vista. Uh, this is Pastor Francisco, my wife Glenda, and we are here on behalf of Pastor Roberto and Brenda uh, from Calvary Chapel, Kino Bay, here in Mexico. And we wanted to say thank you. Thank you for making this trip, the February Mexico mission trip uh, 2021. We really appreciate your work, we really appreciate everything that you did. Uh, this year we had the opportunity to bless two families. One family is, uh, he's a member of the church. His name is Fermin. He has been attending the church for over a decade now. And he has a son. He, he's, his son, I think it's 22 or 23 years old. Uh, his name is Justin. He has kidney failure amongst other conditions in his body. Uh, he's not expected to live much but he has to live with uh, a lot of care. He has to have his own space, which he hadn't up to this point. But with your help, we were able to finish his bedroom and now he has his private uh, space because of all his health conditions. He's in a very, very uh, delic delicate uh, health condition. Uh, his family have to travel twice a week to Hermosillo for doctors and hemodialysis uh, because of the failure of his kidney. But we were able to bless them with the finishing of his room. Also, we were able to help uh, in the construction of a house for a lady uh, who has six grandchildren living with her. The condition of this family, it's very, very poor. Uh, they are in a very, very hard situation. They are in a neighborhood that every, every person that they know, they're, they're either using drugs or they are in, in that environment. So we are really, really grateful for all your hard work and all the help that you, will, you, will, you were able to help us with uh, during this trip to change the life, change the life of this beautiful family uh, and change the life for these kids. The house that you help build, it's going to be a safer environment for them. And for that, we're deeply, deeply grateful. Uh, so we uh, thank you. Thank you for everything you've done. Thank you for all your support. And we hope to see you next, uh, next year in the next Mexico mission trip. And now Glenda, she's going to share a little bit of her heart and I will be translating for you. Muchas gracias, Iglesia de Sierra Vista. Thank you so much, Church in Sierra Vista. De verdad que mi corazón se goza por ver todas las bendiciones que Dios ha traído a México por medio de, de ustedes. My heart is joyful to see all the blessings that you have brought uh, to Mexico. Y en especial este año mi corazón se goza por estos niños. Especially this year our heart rejoices for these kids. Eh, se apellidan Reyes. Their last name is Reyes. Estoy feliz por la bendición que llegó a ellos. And we are really happy for the blessing that... Uh, you provided for them. Estos niños han, se han acercado a la iglesia ya por tres años. These kids have attended the church for over three years. Por, solos. Uh, by themselves. N su abuela no va a la iglesia. Their uh, grandparents, they do not come to the church. Pero ellos han insistido en seguir buscando de Dios. But they are attending and seeking the Lord. Y estoy contenta por la bendición física que llegó a sus vidas. And I'm happy for this physical blessing that arrived to their lives. También quiero pedir oración de parte de ustedes. And I will also ask for your prayers. Por la vida de estos niños. 
for help for these kids. Porque necesitan a Dios. Because they need the Lord. Y una guía para tomar buenas decisiones. And they need guidance in life for making good choices. Y que no sigan los patrones que están cerca de ellos. So that they can break the patterns that they are in their environment. Este año nos va, nos estamos acercando a ellos. In this year we are getting closer to them. Mi, yo y otras mujeres. Uh, myself and other women. Esta, vamos a estar un día a la semana con ellos. We will be helping them and basically homeschooling them one, uh, once a week. Queremos ayudarlos en, y guiarlos en sus vidas y también ayudarlos en su escuela. And we want to guide them in life and help them in, with school. Oren por nosotros para que podamos mostrarles el amor de Dios. Please pray for us as we are showing the love of God to them. Y que hay una vida diferente en Cristo. And offering them a different life in Christ. Gracias por sus oraciones y gracias por todas las bendiciones. Thank you for all your prayers and all your blessings. Dios les bendiga, iglesia. May the Lord bless you guys. Thank you so much and I hope, uh, we hope you enjoy the, the rest of this presentation and uh, we hope to see you guys next year and also pray for the border to reopen so that we can uh, crash the service over there uh, <laughs> any, uh, sometime this year. Thank you. Thank you so much and may the Lord bless you guys. Just a brief history of how this all came about. Um, Dora and I first met Pastor Roberto and Brenda sometime in 2008. Uh, we grew close to the family and uh, and we would visit them in the church uh, when we would uh, vacation there in Keno. Pastor Pat later later met uh, Pastor Roberto and the family and sometime after that uh, our church came alongside with uh, with missions and support. Uh, we feel we feel very blessed uh, what God is doing through the through the church in Keno Bay. Uh, we've seen the pastor's children grow up, go to college, start families of their own, and and now serving in the ministry. It's uh, it's awesome to see. Um, Pastor Roberto has been involved in completing approximately 18 construction projects in Keno Bay since uh, since uh, the mission began um, that's that's awesome he uh, he had it on his heart to uh, to identify a needy family uh, throughout the year and uh, once a year he would uh, he would uh, bless that family by uh, building them uh, in in most cases uh, uh, move them from a cardboard house to a solid structure. Um, every mission trip, uh, I ask some of the men to share a devotional uh, with the team each morning after breakfast before we'd go to the job site. And I'm going to share with you uh, a devotional that I shared with the team during this last trip. Sorry, guys, to bore you with that again, but... Uh, I'm not a pastor or a teacher, but I feel this devotional is something God put on my heart. When I was um, thinking about what to, what to say, what to share, I kept reflecting back on last year and uh, just all the turmoil our country went through during that time and still in some cases, the violence, the riots, the politics, the calls to defund the police, and, and so on. And the word that came to, came to my mind initially was fear. And uh, during my, my study for this devotional, Isaiah 41.10 was the first scripture that came to me, and I'll read it to you. Fear not. For I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. 
I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. When I first, when I first read that, and even now it gives me goosebumps, but um, <clears throat> I, uh, I questioned myself initially. I, I, I said, am I, am I taking this out of context? Am I, am I reading this correctly? Uh, but uh, a short time later, I came across a uh, commentary by uh, Pastor Chuck Smith and, uh, on this particular verse, and I'll read that to you. Reflect upon the promises of this verse as if God is speaking to you personally right now. No matter what difficulty you may be facing, God has chosen you as his servant. God has called you his. And as you look at the circumstances that lie before you right now, the Lord says, fear not, for I am with you. As we're reminded in Romans 8, 31, if God is for us, who can be against us? Wow. I don't know how Pastor Pat gets up here and does this three or four times a week. <sighs> Dora and I experienced fears leading up to every one of these mission trips, and this last one was no exception. There's a lot of preparation and pre-planning that go into every trip. Lodging, tools needed for the job, Thick. <laughs> he's always a blessing because he's he's uh, gets gets me a list. Menus, food. You don't associate food with fear, but uh, unless you're on a diet, I guess. But uh, <laughs> we're very blessed with the menus. Uh, border crossing, road conditions, violence reports, and overall safety of our team. <clears throat> And then there's the unknowns. You try to prepare for those, but you still worry about them. <clears throat> I found some other scripture that, uh, that spoke to me. In uh, Proverbs 29, 25, the fear of man brings a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord shall be safe. And then uh, 2 Timothy 1.7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. Wow. Still speaks to me. Well, in closing, I learned that recently kind of let you guys know I'm almost done. <laughs> um, I would like to thank you guys, our congregation. Um, thank you for your prayers and your support. We couldn't do it without you. After this mission trip, I can now honestly reflect back on last year, and I feel like I experienced a revival. It reminded me of... Uh, the positive things I pursued, like more of God's word, Bible studies, teachings, and a whole lot less of media, of the news. All that said, God shows me every mission trip that he's in control and he has our back. Ah. <sighs> I would especially like to thank our mission team. Like I said, it's probably the smallest group that we've ever had, but they worked very hard. Very hard. And 
and we both thank you guys very much. We were blessed by the fellowship too. And at this time, I would like to invite my wife up, Dora, who's going to share with you. Thank you for coming. I would like to thank all of you for your prayers, all of you who made a financial contribution and all who supported our fundraiser, making this trip possible. 2020 was for sure a challenge. To begin, I wanna share with you where I was. At the outset of this mission, I had a lot of anxiety and hesitation. I had put up barriers, kept focusing on all that could go wrong. I truly believed that there was no way we could make this trip considering the state of the world. In all sincerity, I didn't even want to go forward with um, our first uh, meeting. I wanted to cancel the trip, send the funds to Kino, and just not go, thinking next year would be better. In all sincerity, um, I'm sorry, but God, by his grace, one moment at a time, one concern at a time, kept showing me that I must trust him. He never closed any doors, and every problem would consistently get resolved. The fundraiser, the planning, your contributions, your encouragement. So Rick and I continued to pray and remain faithful in this Mexico ministry. We were both supportive of each other, knowing we were both struggling with all of this, a lot. Um, we would have moments where we were silent um, every time the trip would come up, and. I would try to discourage him and he would say, just wait, just, let's just wait one more week. We had not been back um, to, no, uh, to Kino since last March when the U.S. closed down and Pastor uh, Francisco or Glenda were not, were not able to visit us either. Um, in December, we had a chance to meet with them in Nogales, Sonora. That's when I became aware of how distant we had grown and how um, without knowing, you just grow cold and you, it seems like it's so, so long ago that you've been with them. That's how we felt. Needless to say, we were very encouraged, very encouraged. During our conversation, Brenda, Pastor Roberto's wife, shared with us that we must learn to live with this virus, be steadfast and not faint, amongst a hundred other things. Uh, see, they have been serving and helping their community during these hard and unknown times. They've been um, helping with food, food baskets and everything they can um, throughout the whole year. I have the wrong page here. I'm sorry. We, Calvary Sierra Vista and Calvary Kino Bay, needed to reconnect as a team and focus once again on the main vision we had established years ago when we first started working together to do mission work. That goal was and has always been to help the less fortunate. God intends, God showed me that he intends not only for his mission to go forward, but it would go, go forward on his terms. That means virus or no virus, mask or no mask. I had to tear down those barriers I was slowly building and get rid of all my fears and anxieties. The mission goal, Andy Johnson, an associate pastor of Capitol Hill Baptist Church, said it best when writing about primary goal of missions. He said, and I quote, it, the church, should especially labor to fulfill its unique mission to guard the gospel, proclaim the gospel, and disciple those who respond in repentance and faith to the gospel. If our churches fail at that mission, no matter what other good things we do, we will have failed in the unique mandate that Christ has given us as churches. It is good to do other good things, and our churches may make different decisions about engaging in good works and social action, but it is the stewardship of the gospel that remains utterly unique to the Christian church. We must keep first things first. That is the priority of Christian missions." End quote. Our mission here at Calvary Sierra Vista is to glorify, glorify God 
by loving our brothers and sisters in Christ and through the sharing of the gospel with unbelievers. That is the goal of this mission's ministry, that we accomplish our mission goal. The way we accomplish our mission goal is by meeting the needs of the less fortunate in the form of construction projects. We desire and love to help our brothers and sisters in Christ. We show the world that we are Christ's disciples. And to quote Jesus now directly, John 13, 35 says, by this, all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. For this mission trip, like Francisco shared with us about Jostan, a young man um, that is, is going through um, medical problems, it was necessary for him to have his own room, separate room, clean room, and uh, we helped to complete the work Pastor Roberto had started by finishing construction on his bedroom. In addition to helping a brother in Christ, we aim to share the gospel with un unbelievers. When we read the gospel of Jesus, we see how Jesus consistently met the needs of people first. He healed the sick, the demon possessed. He restored a girl's life, fed the multitudes and many more needs that he met. But Jesus' end goal was the gospel and salvation for the lost, weary and scattered sheep. Matthew 9, 35, 36 says, Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them, because they were weary and scattered, just like sheep having no shepherd. And that's how I felt when I saw those kids. I mean, you will see the kids on the video. It was, it was hard. See, building them a home is a very kind and caring thing to do for them, to meet a basic need, but a, of greater importance is to meet their eternal need. When planning this trip, Pastor Roberto also brought to our attention a woman named Alejandra Reyes, and Glenda said their last name is Reyes, which means kings. Um, who, he, um, who he and his family, Pastor Roberto, have been sharing the gospel with. Alejandra is currently raising her grandchildren because her adult children just are not able to. Her home was not suitable to house her and the children. Her home was not safe or well built, as you will see in the pictures, and it was made out of scraps of wood. Our primary construction project for this mission was to build them a safer home. The Kino family and I agreed, as you could see Glenda, that this family has been by far the most difficult and hardest family to help and, and painful because of their present state and what awaits these children in the near future. Our number one desire for them is to come to know the person and work of Jesus Christ. This mission trip was, like every other trip, of tre tremendous value to me. And I know, I, I know God can accomplish this and much more without me. But I am thankful that he has called me and he has provided for us to go on these trips and, and bless the less fortunate. Every year I am trem tremendously blessed and encouraged how God just watches over us and, and uh, the team that... Um, not only praise and and we work together and and we pray together in closing <laughs> i wonder where he learned that no <laughs> in closing i want to thank you rick this wasn't on my notes but i want to thank you for being the man of god you have been to me and my family for um being strong and steadfast, you're a man of few words, but your walk encourages mine. Your life enhances mine. And I, I couldn't do this without you. Um, in closing, I want to leave you with this thought. The chief end of man, or the main purpose of man, is to glorify God. How do we glorify God? By doing what he commands. Matthew 28, 19, and 20. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, 
baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe, observe all these things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> I just love this church, folks, I have to tell you. And I feel privileged to be able to stand up here. Here, I'm crying already. <laughs> um, good evening, my name is Rose. In Psalm 92, 13 and 14, I read that those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age they shall be fresh and flourishing. You know, I have prayed long and hard whether or not I should join this year, uh, this year's group on this annual mission trip to Mexico. Ob um, objections came flooding in, not from anyone, but from my own head. Rose, are you serious? A trip like this involves long travel, lots of hard labor, and remember that COVID is just everywhere. I seemed to hear all this while I was preparing for the trip. I paid the fare, I bought the t-shirt, I borrowed a sleeping bag, and I packed my stuff. I even had my passports ready after the look I got from Brian at one of our meetings. <laughs> I arranged for a wake-up call as a backup, and I asked Julie to ring me at 4.30 a.m. just so that I wouldn't oversleep. As in the past, we met here right at church, and after we coffeeed up, we prayed and, uh, uh, for safe travel and a successful trip, and then Rick had announced that it was time for us to leave. Our group was smaller, as it was said earlier. Uh, it was much smaller this year. Uh, four men, nine ladies, and a very special teenage girl. Our assignment this year, uh, as it has all already been mentioned, primarily to finish a couple of houses that Calvary Chapel Kino Bay had already started. The men were to install doors and windows, and the electricity also, after Beth and Mona showed them how to do it. <laughs> the rest of the ladies did the cooking and painting. We painted houses inside and outside. We painted the ceilings, and we even painted stuff that did not need to be painted like that. <laughs> like the top of my <laughs> bun got white. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> one of my favorite parts of this trip was, well, I had two favorite parts. Uh, as Dora had mentioned, one were the children. You know, they always get to you. Uh, they were uh, running around, often in the way, uh, happy, curious, excited about getting a new home. The other was an evening that was very special when Pastor Roberto and family came over to where we stayed, and after dinner, he gave his personal testimony. He told us how God had saved him, and therefore, he saved his family. And as you saw earlier, that his family, their grown-up kids and their spouses, they are all serving God now. They are part of the ministry. We all sang that evening. They sang for us, with us. Uh, we sang in English, Spanish, no Hungarian. <laughs> the pastor's wife has a beautiful voice, and she sang while one of her sons uh, had played the ukulele. I have to say that it was a joyful trip. The accommodations were great. The food gourmet, honestly, Shrimp tacos on the beach, it just doesn't get any better than that, you know. <laughs> we stayed in a beautiful area 
in an older condo, but right on the beach, the sunrises and the sunsets were not to be missed. They were spectacular. I believe we accomplished what we set out to do. And besides the work, we got a chance to bring the hope of the gospel and the love of Christ to the people. After we returned, Dr. Kasanga asked me if there is an age limit. He meant for those who are just, um, well, um, too old. <laughs> I told him that evidently not, <laughs> since I got to go, <laughs> and I pray that the age limit won't change next year, just in case God may want, grants me the opportunity to serve on yet another mission trip in Kino Bay, Mexico. Thank you. Hola, mi nombre es Julia Poder. Hello, my name is Julie Power. And I just want to start out tonight by thanking Rick and Dora for their outstanding leadership. These two love God, they love people, and their hearts are fully invested in Kino Bay, and it shows, so thank you both. So the Monday before the trip, I had texted Dora, and I let her know that I was still having a lot of post-COVID fatigue and weakness, and I thought it might be best if I not go on the trip because I didn't want to be a dead weight on the job sites. Well, she texts me back, and she says, please come, I really need help in the kitchen. And I just stared at the text thinking, the kitchen? She wants me to work in the kitchen. I had always said, put me wherever you need me. But what I meant was, put me anywhere except the kitchen. Well, if you've been coming to Calvary Chapel any length of time, you've heard Pastor Pat say, it doesn't matter where you serve, but that you serve, and that you serve as unto the Lord. In Colossians, it tells us, whatever you find to do, do it with all your heart as unto the Lord and not for human masters. So with that in mind, and knowing that God had some humbling to do in my life, I set out for Kino Bay. So the kitchen actually ended up being perfect for where I was at. Because of Dora's organization and the pre-trip preparation by some of the ladies, everything went so smooth. And an added blessing from God, and I know Dora doesn't see it this way, is that all the glass dishes got left behind. <laughs> so we had to use disposable, and that cut way down on all the dishwashing for the dishwasher. It was fantastic. So then on the second day, Dora added to my tasks the cleaning of the women and the men's bathrooms. I said, Lord, I promise the kitchen was humbling enough. <laughs> But work as unto the Lord, so off I went, and it was fine. I would almost say fun. Only God can make cleaning a bathroom fun when you're serving him. So whether in Kino Bay or Sierra Vista, there's serving to do. Sometimes God leads us to it. Sometimes he shoves us into it like he did me. What I thought was going to be pure torture ended up being a pure blessing. Um, I'm sad when I think of everything I would have missed had Dora not encouraged me to go and had I not got over myself and just went. There were so many highlights that happened in that kitchen and with the ladies I got to serve with and people I got to meet, lots of conversations, just not enough time to share all of them with you tonight, but I will tell you they were God blessed. And although my sharing was to be on the kitchen, I will share my highlights, even though Rose already stole both of them. Um, the day the kitchen crew got to visit the work site where they were building the two bedrooms, um, it was so hard to see the living conditions. But seeing that grandma and those grandchildren and the smiles on their faces and the joy they had over those two bedrooms was just so sweet. The second highlight was the night of praise and worship and hearing Pastor Roberto's testimony it was so neat to see all God was doing in Kino Bay and to realize that it all started with two people, those two people that surrendered their hearts to the Lord fully and committed to serve him and to see that all that has come after that. 
what a privilege it was to see all that God was doing and to serve with this great group of people who were definitely working as unto the Lord. Thank you and God bless. Oh, I'm not as funny as Julie. <laughs> and I didn't have to work in the kitchen. Um, but it was a blessing to be in the kitchen with them whenever I could. I first want to thank the Lord um, and give him the glory for this trip, for the privilege to be able to go and serve at Keno Bay. It was emotional, I will say that. I've been wanting to go for a long time, since uh, I started going to Calvary about four years ago, but God's had me in other areas of service until now. I also want to thank Rick and Dora um, for their faithfulness for, to this mission and for continuing to hear from the Lord regarding his plan year after year. Serving in Mexico is a challenge because the laws and the rules of that country are changing all the time. So it requires flexibility and patience, which they both exhibit every day that they're on the team. It was a blessing to serve with these great group of women and men, and also with Pastor and Roberto and his family. Before I went, I didn't know Pastor Roberto and Brenda very well. I hardly knew Glenda and Francisco or any of their family, but now I do. And what a wonderful, godly, serving family they are. They're dedicated to serving God in Keno Bay, and it's so evident when you're with them that they live and breathe their walk with God. They literally live and breathe it. Their family unit is strong, and they truly give all they have to meet the needs of their community. I can imagine that would be a challenge seeing what we saw down there and the heart commitment that Pastor Roberto and his family have for the, for the people in that community. Not only that, but the family were so joy-filled, happy, thankful, and supportive of our Calvary team all the while that we were there with them. I was on the construction crew with Rose when her bun got painted. <laughs> We painted a lot. We painted for three days. Serving that grandmother and her eight, six, eight grandchildren, there were, they were everywhere. It was hard to count how many there actually were, but they were all under 10 years old. We did, we did find that out. Can you imagine a grandmother caring for her grandchildren under, under 10 years old? It was awesome. But if I'm being honest, it was also very hard emotionally for those of us who saw the surroundings of where these children lived and still um, how happy they were. One's first instinct was to feel bad and maybe even shameful about how blessed we are to live in this country compared to them. And all you want to do is just give them everything while you're there. But you know you can't do that. But what I came away with is that Grandma and these children were so blessed beyond measure by our acts of kindness and service to them. And God was using us to be a blessing to them in the midst, midst of their very poor and impoverished community. We got to be a blessing to them. What a privilege that was. They were all so happy to receive this blessing. These children had so little and yet they were overjoyed by receiving a new bedroom and new beds. We come home to our house every day and these children were so excited about getting a new bed. It was so humbling. Being on the mission field reminds me even more how much the Lord loves a cheerful giver and a servant's heart. In Acts 20 verse 35, Paul is speaking and he says, I've shown you in every way by laboring like this that you must support the weak 
and remember the words of the Lord Jesus that he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And I know that we were all much more blessed in our giving than that family was in their receiving. Amen. Thank you. Hi, I'm Janet, and uh, this has actually been, I think, my sixth trip to, to Kino. So the, uh, the words that kind of resonate with me when I think back on the, all the trips is, is faith, fellowship, and family. Um, I think fellowship for me is, is really what I take away from these trips. And uh, I'll tell you, 10 women in four bedrooms, two bathrooms, we got to know each other. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I think uh, uh, Gayla and Dora for even the bedtime chats after the lights went out, you know, apologies to Rose who was trying to sleep outside of our room and heard our, our chatting and laughter. But, uh, you know, you just really get to know um, each other on this kind of a trip. But the family, I mean, the families that we supported through this trip were amazing, um, especially the grandma and their, their kids. I think, I, I'm pretty sure we were supposed to kind of try and stay separate from the kids on this trip. But that went out the window the first morning. We were, we were gathering around to get our instructions, and I saw Beth on her knees shooting marbles with the kids. And it just was awesome. I mean, the kids were the same kids that we've seen in the past because we're working in the same neighborhood. But they knew this time we were there for them. And they were so invested, and they wanted to get to know us. And even Lisa's, uh, they learned about Lisa's alpaca farm and they want to know what did you name your al alpacas you know it's just amazing how with us not speaking Spanish and them not speaking English we, we were able to communicate um, but again family Pastor Roberto as you've heard already you know we got to hear his testimony but we also as as their kids uh, Isaac and Josue are learning English this trip we were able to really connect with them in a whole new way. And, and uh, Josue's wife, Laura, would interpret sometimes when they would stumble. But um, getting to know them at a deeper level and hearing Pastor Roberto and Brenda's testimony was just so raw and vulnerable. It was, um, if, you, if that's all you took away from that trip, you would, you would have enough faith to live the rest of your life. It was, it was just amazing. And Pastor, well, Brenda talked about her uh, experience with COVID. We almost lost her. Um, and Pastor Roberto, shortly after that, was in a head-on car accident. And he talked about that experience where he actually forgave the young man who totaled his car. Um, so it was just, you know, uh, more and more family issues, uh, just kind of seeing how these families are just so powerful. But those kids, um, the last day was a uh, church service, and they were at the church service, and, and before the service, they were sitting amongst us, and then they had to go and sit with their grandma. And after the service, as we were leaving, each kid came up and found each team member and gave us the most amazing hugs and thank you. And you can't tell me that these kids have not been affected by this experience. And, uh, and to see the love of Jesus that was brought to them, you know, if we can reflect even a little bit of that, um, there's hope for these kids. But faith, I think this trip for me, um, like Dora and it's been said before, it was, it was a leap of faith. Um, when we were deciding whether to go, um, you know, I said, yeah, you know, I think it's gonna be okay, Let, let's do it. And of course, the closer we got, the more the, the fears and the doubts start coming in, thinking, was this really a good idea? In fact, there's family members we didn't even tell we were going because they were, we knew that they were gonna be that, that uh, worried about us. But my faith, has just been so much increased just by watching how God worked through this trip, 
he kept us all safe. We did take precautions more than we had in the past, but every step along the way, God was there. And then watching how, you know, we, like Julie described her um, working in the kitchen, um, there were so many ways that we had made decisions that we thought were for a reason, a good reason that God took that decision and, and used it for a whole different reason and it was so much better and just watching how he would weave all of these, all of these decisions together for the best was just incredible. And so I am ready for next year and I hope we can, we can uh, make it a little bit bigger group but um, it has been fantastic. So thank you. Hey, good evening. I'm Vic Palladini. Uh, I've been on these mission trips more, t more, more times than I have fingers in my both hands. Uh, leading with uh, Rick and Dora Tudor. It's been just a, a never-ending great time, every time. One, one watch word I say every year is flexible. You gotta be really flexible on these trips. And uh, this is, is no, no exception on this. Most of all for me, and unlike the rest of the, my, my group here is, uh, I just feel very, very blessed of your support. Without your support, this would never happen. I mean, your financial support, your continuing prayer support, uh, you know, you, you, throughout the year, Rick and Dora, unknown to many people, but hundreds of hours into this. They have to do the food, the lodging, the, the, the you know, locations, uh, contacting Pastor Roberto, Pastor Francisco, uh, and uh, all the materials and that kind of thing. This year, I was the, uh, selected to be one of the construction crew's uh, leads. So I, I had the, uh, the privilege to help at the, the house that had the grandmother and the, and the many kids. Uh, and so without your, your support, that this would never have occurred. We we'll never even started. Um, I've been with Rick and Dora through a number of iterations. Uh, Rocky Point, Prenta Badasco, a number of years. I've been to Kino Bay, a number of years. Been to Kotemic, south of uh, Naco, a number of years. So we've been around, and by far, each and every one of these uh, trips is just a blessing. Blessing not only for us, because we know we have... The, the ability and the dedication of Pastor Pat and all the rest of the pastors here, the, 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 uh, the congregation, uh, and you support us so, so greatly. I'm just, just, my heart is just so, so happy because of that. And we thank you, each and every one of you, I really do. Uh, it wouldn't have happened otherwise. I'm gonna make my, my presentation pretty short. Every year we have a, a lot of memorable uh, ideas that goes along. Uh, sometimes they're funny, sometimes not so funny, but th this year was no exception. The two things that I really uh, enjoyed a, a lot was the, the fellowship where we, once we get down there to, uh, with the, uh, the, the locals. Uh, realize that it's a very poor community. It's right on the Sea of Cortez. The, the population of Kino Bay is only like 3,000. They do have a couple hundred uh, expats from the U.S. who live there year round. Uh, so uh, they have a, a little area that's a more affluent than, than the downtown area. And, uh, and the, the, ch the church is relatively small. Uh, it's probably about the size of our old building B it was uh, next door here. And the pastors are not, most of the time, full-time pastors. They can't afford it. They'd be lucky when, uh, when the, it goes around to, for the tithing uh, each week to make $50 total in the entire church. Uh, so many of them uh, have other jobs. Some of the kids run hardware stores. Pastor Roberto does construction. Pastor Francisco does uh, some, uh, some construction also. Uh, and they support CCBC, Calvary Chapel Bible College, in Ensenada up north. Matter of fact, all the kids have been to, and graduates of the two-year program at CCBC. Um, it's, it's kind of a, a sidelight. Calvary Chapel Bible College in Ensenada is also a, a nickname of Calvary Chapel Bridal College. Most of them met, met their wives and, and husbands there. So they ended up getting married. So convenient that, that uh, as we speak, as I speak right now, Alejandro and Ellie, uh, Ellie is uh, Elizabeth, who's Pastor Roberto and Brenda's daughter, are back at the Bible College for a commitment of a full year 
to support the women and the men students of the Bible college right now. They feel that, that empowered to do that. And they just got married October. Imagine getting married in uh, November. They got married in November of last year. Within a month and a half, they made a commitment to go back as newlyweds and support the Bible college at, at Ensenada. So the history of, of them, uh, the families, uh, are, are just fantastic. It's very, very well. One of the big memorial events I've had, and I was, like I said, the construction lead on the project. We did a couple windows, a couple doors, uh, a lot of painting inside, outside, coating the roofs. Uh, did a, got a lot of things. The kids all running around. Um, remember, they're a very poor uh, uh, society there, so they don't have a lot of tools. I think they have half of my tools now, because all the kids grab my tools and it's like herding cats with my tools, you know. So I had to chase them around for my hammer and my chisel and that kind of thing, which was, uh, you know, that's just typical Mexico. As well as sometimes some of the guys who have not been there before come out of the uh, the bathroom and they say, "Hey, we don't have no water." Oh, welcome to Mexico. Oh, or we don't have any hot water. Welcome to Mexico. <laughs> Wait a half an hour. You know, that's just to be I'm being flexible. While I was there and uh, and doing uh, some window framing and putting a window in for their their new uh, bedrooms, uh, one of the older ten year old uh, little lady came up to me, uh, gave me a big hug, and she handed me this. And I'm right in the middle of doing doing work for them, and so I I unfolded this piece of paper that she gave me and little did I realize there was not a dry eye in the room when I realized it, it's a shape of a heart in pencil and it says hola. That's her way of saying thank you and, that, and that's the only way. Realizing these kids have not gone to school for a year. They don't have internet. They don't have computers. Sometimes some of the affluent kids or adults have a cell phone. So there's no way to go to school except for the, the school that they're playing now, now with uh, at the church, Glenda and Francisco who are doing that uh, and getting them to the church, which is only a mere three blocks away. So they're, they're finally getting educated after a year of not doing any kind of education. Uh, and, there's, and a lot of times they're not able to read and write. The adults are not able to read and write. So it's things like this that really, you know, just st strike your heart. Lastly, uh, as we were leaving, we, we all got hugs from uh, the kids and the, and the grandmother. Uh, and the grandmother said to me in Spanish, which not really good right now, but um, Francisco says she wants you to tell everybody, Dios le pendinga, God is with you. Thank you. At this time, we'd like to show you the slideshow.
Well, that, that's who he is. <laughs> Let's pray. Well, Father God, so much to be thankful for. Thank you for allowing me and my wife to be a part of this. And uh, thank you for the team you gave us. Thank you for all the love and fellowship. And uh, thank you for our congregation. We love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.